I decided that I wanted to have the highest score possible for my international baccalaureate program. And in order to get the highest score possible, you have to get the highest score possible in every single subject. Mm. And French was going to be one of them. And so I was reflecting on this goal and I wasn't just going, oh, this is what I want to get. And then I was leaving it at that. I was going, I want to get the highest score possible. Now, what do I have to do to make that happen? And I identified the fact that French was going to be the subject in which it was probably going to be the most difficult for me to achieve the goal. Right. Um, and that's also because I identified the fact that with languages, it's not so much learning content for a subject, it's skill acquisition. And skill acquisition is something which takes place over a long period of time and is best developed over a long period of time. It's not like what you can do, it's not like in the lead up to an exam, you can, as provided it's, it's a exam of some substance and it's not just like a vocabulary test or something. You can't, in the lead up to an exam, it's not like you can just learn 50 pieces of vocabulary and go in and then be able to write an essay in the language, right? Mm -hmm. So I was, I was aware of this and I thought to myself, if French is the subject which I'm most likely to knock perfect score in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of year 12, which is the first year of the program where the workload is slightly lighter to go ham on French mm -hmm. and spend a lot of time and put a lot of effort into French. And then by the time I reach year 12, which is my final year of high school, I'll be laughing. I'll be going, well, now I wanted to be, I wanted to get to the point where I spoke French. So doing well in the exams was inevitable because that's the way I've, that's the way I've always viewed doing well at, doing well in an academic subject in a in, in a in a in an academic subject which is for a language i've, mm -hmm. I've viewed that <laughs> i'm stumbling over my words here what i'm trying to say is i've always thought the easiest way to do well in a language subject is to simply speak the language mm -hmm. it's not so much to focus so much on doing all the exercises for that class and preparing for that one specific oral really well yeah, that's great and that'll help you. Um, but you need the foundation of being able to speak the language. And once you can speak the language, you can do anything. So that's what, that's what I wanted to give myself. So all of this is kind of the lead up to saying what happened was I started interacting with French outside of class and in depth and interacting with French, uh, so having more moments where I was interacting in French because I was interested in getting a good score for my high school diploma. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, in listening to podcasts on the bus when I was commuting to school, in watching YouTubers when I was getting ready for school in the morning, by chatting to natives on language exchange apps and doing all of these things and interacting with the language authentically to try and build up my interaction with the language outside of the class, I discovered that I found it really fun. And I really enjoyed this language learning process. And I, and I had these really wonderful moments where I would... I was acutely aware of my own progress. I noticed that I would walk into class in the morning and I'd start speaking with the language assistant or the teacher and I'd say things that I didn't even know I knew how to say. I didn't even know that I knew them and they just oh, came nice. out because I'd spent so much time listening to podcasts and interacting with the language. And I'm going, oh my God, how did I, how did I know that? And for example, we'd be studying the subjunctive in class and for the past few months I've been using the subjunctive not even knowing what it was because wow. I'd heard I'd heard constructions which required the the subjunctive so many times that when I then went to say it is necessary that I then used the subjunctive mood just because that's what I'd heard so many times you right. know what I mean so I was noticing all these things and the fact that I was starting to do even better at school combined with the fact that I was interacting with the language authentically and having a lot of fun on my own and feeling like I was really progressing. That is what made me start thinking this is a lot of fun. And it never went outside French. It was solely and completely focused on French. But mm. then but once I left school and I graduated from school, I started going, well, maybe I'll start a few others. Mm. Anyway, excellent. I'm being cool. a bit of a chatterbox, but that's how it, uh, that's how it kind of all, all began. So when you started listening to these podcasts, watching these YouTube videos, getting more involved with the language in a extracurricular way, were you aware of the whole, well, let's firstly say language acquisition, second language acquisition theory, uh, language learning community, or did you, was this just something that you stumbled into 
at things that you started doing and you rolled with it.